after the fashion of Will Osler's classic meandering rants from our later golden age, might we identify that the letter M is very meaningful in Manhattan in mid-January or thereabouts. Moreover, moving from the Midlands in Midtown was a scheme Sir Ralph Musgrave in his trademarked metaphorical, mystical, magic manner in a masterful manner makes his case for a quartet of M's. I have no idea what this is all about. Neither does David. Let me finish. Um, which certainly promises meaningful enlightenment or at least major entertainment for our masses. Uh, we are masses. After which we will be mired in no more than a miasma of misinformation. I also have to tell you that for many, many years, Andy Kuska has been writing the program notes. So this is this is me. It's, it's masterful Kuska. Anyway, David Stewart Davis. I didn't write that. <laughs> uh, right, this is a, a one-man performance, so I'll be playing all the parts and doing all the voices. So to enhance your entertainment, you might like to close your eyes as you listen. Or if you want the absolute perfect pleasure, leave the room now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 20th century Faux Pas Production, in association with Lowering Tone Enterprises, along with Pregnant Pause Productions, <laughs> presents a David Stewart Davis Woman Parago, a syndicate of four, or a quartet of M's. Act One, Part Two, Episode Six. <laughs> The scene is the secret headquarters of the evil mastermind, the Napoleon of Crime, an all weather leapfrog champion of physic, <laughs> Professor Gladys Moriarty. <laughs> this is situated in Wandsworth, in the cellar beneath the manufactory of artificial butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Creek, the professor's housekeeper, enters carrying a plate of food. Yeah, crumpets, Professor. Oh, that's just a matter of opinion. <laughs> Has my first guest arrived, Crokey? Yes. Certainly did. Mrs. Crook exits, and a tall, extremely thin man enters. He is dressed in safari clothes, a pink helmet, and carrying a scuffed tiger. He's smoking a small, unpicked piggy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Colonel Morrow. <laughs> That's Moran. <laughs> Not what I'm saying. <laughs> you shouldn't be wearing that hat indoors. Let me take the piss. What do you usually do? There is a knock at the door, and another man enters. He has rounded features, rounded shoulders, and carries a round of drinks. <laughs> Anyone for a double vodka shandy? Ah, oh, Milverton, little boy. Good to see you. Blackmail anyone recently? <laughs> but just your housekeeper, Mrs. Croak, came up with some very interesting tidbits. Oh, yes, it's those low cut dresses she insists are always wearing. <laughs> well, we are almost at quorum. So we just need our final member to arrive. As Moriarty is uttering these words, the door opens and a very seductive looking woman enters. She is wearing fishnet tights, tight fishnets, a fishing mountain, and a lightweight fish. She is carrying a further lower constrictor. 
Hello, boys. Oh, Merry Boston. So good of you to pop in. Now, down to business. We are the four M's. Moriarty, Moron, Milton, and Boston. And we're all here to forge a syndicate. The purpose of which is to get rid of Sherlock Holmes, the biggest nuisance. Here, yeah, yeah. here. I particularly dislike him. Oh, uh, what is that, Milton? Have you ever stood here from the serpents of the zoo? and stare into their piercing eyes. No. And a lie. <laughs> Too busy blackmailing people for that sort of thing. <laughs> this Holmes is a threat to my business, always stepping in and returning the incriminating letters back to their owners. A terrible spoil sport. I had the real lowdown on Gladstone's bag. Managed to get her name and everything. Holmes, despite the deal, he has to go. Uh, I agree. He has been the boy on the backside of my activities for far too long. He has to be brought to a head. That's what, that's what really matters. Act two, scene six, stay next B. The scene is the sitting room of 221B Baker Street. Dr. Watson is sitting in a rocking chair by the fire. Wearing a saddle wester with a parrot on his shoulder, his feet in a bucket of water, a kipper tied under his nose, and rocking backwards and forwards in an erratic manner, shouting, Avast me, hearties, at irregular intervals. Sherlock Holmes is sitting opposite him. I deduce that you are reading one of your sea stories again, Watson. No, <laughs> oh, yeah, indeed. I'm trying to capture the true atmosphere of the tale. I'm going to be walking the plank over the bathtub later. <laughs> Watson, you may not be a conductor of light, but you are a very dim bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> At any post, just this threatening letter saying someone is going to kill me. Mrs. Hudson. No, I don't think it's her. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mr. Holmes, uh, just popped in to ask you what you wanted for lunch. Will you be requiring uh, a usual, you know, roasted pheasant, a side of beef, a haunch of venison, new potatoes, roast potatoes, boiled onions, articulate hearts, devils on horseback, sabines on donkeys, rich goods, fat gravy, a sprinkling of chicory, and all the trimmings, along with two bottles of the 1752 claret and a strawberry junkie trifle and a stomach pump to follow. Yes. <laughs> or will burgers and fries do? <laughs> uh, just morphine, pate and toast for me. Yeah? <laughs> right you are, Cheryl. I see Dr. Watson still at sea, so I'll get him an albatross sandwich and a plate of skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Copper Beaches, Jeff's old root passes place. Smack! 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 <laughs> right, Miss Hunter, you can put your pants back on again. <laughs> and then I want you to put on this electric blue dress. <laughs> well, where do I plug it in? <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Moriarty's lair. Oh, Mrs. Crook, how are things going with Violent Hunter? Very nicely. I've managed to worm our way into her confidence. Excellent. Well, here is the poison guaranteed to burn through the abdomen of any human being. And very good for clearing up soup stains on a pale carpet. <laughs> See that she gets it in the right pie. Meanwhile, things are quiet in respect to the straws off at the Scotland Yard. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Baker Street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I say, Holmes, I have a query. I've often suspected of Mark Watson. I've seen no bustle hanging on the washing line. <laughs> no, I, I think, uh, I think you know more than you're telling me. But isn't that the basis of our relationship? <laughs> if I tell you everything, there would be nothing to unravel, except your need to trust. <laughs> I think someone is trying to kill you. 
And what makes you say that? Well, the gunshot from across the road this morning smashed your bus to Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> that exploding expedition that came in the post. The deadly spider that crept out of your tobacco pouch and was consumed in your mission. And that letter that arrived after lunch saying, we are going to kill you. <laughs> Signed the syndicate of four. Just coincidence. <laughs> Aha. I deduce we have a visitor. Watson, make yourself scarce. I suspect I am about to encounter a fiend. Oh, I'll crawl into my usual hiding place. Oh, I can't. The cold scuttle is full. Just go to the pub. <laughs> oh, very well. Once Watson has made his way to the horse's spittoon, he told his visitor enters. Ah, Professor Moriarty. Ah, oh, Mr. Holmes. You have far less frontal nose hair than I expected. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Hudson is a dab hand with the clippers. <laughs> oh, I've always wanted a dab hand. I have a glove that would fit it perfectly. Ah, uh -huh, Mr. Holmes, it is dangerous to finger one's private parts in the pocket of one's dressing gown. <laughs> Sorry, it's just an old habit from student days. <laughs> Referring to my notes, I see that you absconded with my laboratory bowl on the fourth of the month. I was severely inconvenienced. I brought you a gift. It's an all-inclusive holiday to Switzerland, and I've also thrown in the swimsuit. I was hoping you would throw in the towel as well. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Mrs. Hudson's kitchen. So nice to see you again, Violet. It's Violet. Violet is my mother. What is Mr. Holmes having for dinner this evening? Oh, he's having horns of hedgehog in a grizzle pizzle. Oh, Look, here's the hedgehog now. I'm just basting it. <laughs> As Mrs. Hudson turns her back, Violet Hunter slips a poison pellet up the rectum of the hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> Later that evening, in the sitting room of 221 B. Ah, it's Beckham Lestrade. What do I owe the honour of this visit? Oh, blimey, Mr. Holmes. Blimey, poor apples and pears. Whistle and flute, they might say. Trouble and strike. Oh, blimey. Watch your cock. Wobble down the earth, Cape Well, there's your father. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, Mr. Strait, you've come at a very fortuitous time. We are just about to dine on a plumptious hedgehog. <laughs> Go, blimey. Strike a light. Plates of meat. Go, blimey. Yes, father. Well, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to taste it first. Call <laughs> blind, Mr. Rub, dab, dab, please, rub, go for you. Good heavens, Holmes, he's fainted. He's better than that, Watson. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> At last, I am rid of this mumbling cotton oaf. <laughs> you killed him. Not I, what the old fruit. The four ends. There are you trying to do away with me. I've turned the tables and eliminated one of the irritants in my life. Their latest ploy was the poison hedgehog. Really? <coughs> I found it delicious. <laughs> so tasty. You feel a bit funny, huh? <laughs> oh, the greedy old fool. So that's two hits for one hedgehog. <laughs> I'll last time three of them both. Ah, someone at the door. Come in. Oh, hello, uh, Mr. Cumberbatch. Uh, <laughs> there's a Mr. Martin Freeman and Mr. Rupert Graves to see you for the rehearsal for their new parts. Excellent. Send them in, you know. <laughs>